Hi everyone. Thank you for coming to Ave Trim today for the exhibition opening of Dark and Blue. Um, this is his um, second solo exhibition in our gallery, and um, it's been a couple of years now since the last one. And Darwin is one of those artists who always like to um, move forward. But before we start, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Guigo, Gadigo, and the digital uh, people of the Loran Nation, and pay respect to the elders, past, present, and emerging. Um, yeah, as I was saying, Darwin is one of those artists who always like to move forward. So he always come up with new body of work, and I always say to him that I admire this quality in him. He's very brave because all the work that he did were always very popular. But he's not satisfied with just doing works which is popular in demand. He always likes to do something different again, you know. So, um, so in this new body of work, which are a lot of them are text based, and they are quite interested. They sort of like um, making social comments, and um, and so it's, I think. Um, Mabel had a long conversation with uh, Darwin, and um, I think he will be should be able to uh, give you some idea of what it's about. Um, Dr. Mabel Lee is uh, one of my best friends. She's a retired professor from Sydney University. Um, she's um, a, a fantastic uh, translator. She's done um, a lot of translation, which are very you know, acknowledged as one of the best. And she did one for So Mountain. Um, which is for um, Kao Chen Jing, the, the artist and writer, um, you know, and he won the, the Nobel Peace Prize. So, oh, literature, literature, literature sorry. <laughs> Nobel Prize for literature, yeah. Um, so, um, Mabel is um, gonna, um, I think Mabel spent a bit of time studying the work by Darwin, and so um, I'd like you all to welcome Dr. Mabel Lee. Thank you, so I did spend a full week solidly studying his works because I hadn't seen them before. I didn't manage to come to previous exhibitions. And there was also the one at um, Western Sydney that Jonah Capon spoke at and opened. But I, I did read your piece and other pieces and I've studied your CV. Um, which I thought was very lacking, but um, I had a bit of a conversation when I came early. So this uh, is a great pleasure for me to be launching this exhibition. I fell in love with your works when I went through, and I studied, I'm a very good student. I did go through all the stuff on the internet again and again, and read what you had and also your CV, which I thought was very lucky. But you have filled me in and mentioned the New Zealand connection, which doesn't come up anywhere. Anyway, I sort of think of you as a little Darpen, because when I say Darpen, it sounds like it's English. <laughs> but I find, find it really strange. Anyway, sometimes I'll say little Darpen. Uh, Anyway, uh, Ndokpa was born in Beijing in 1982 and I've just learned, I was questioning him just now and I said, did you study art in China? He said, no, he studied from his father. He didn't attend any institute and obviously he's a very good student. Um, but had some schooling in New Zealand and went back to China. And obviously very talented and his father presumably recognised your talent and continued to uh, encourage you. And on, on your CV you say that you earned your BA First Class Honours in Visual Communication at Northumbria University in 2005. This means must have be pretty good in English and would have read quite a lot as well about English literature, English art, um, and European art as well. Um, and then the next thing you are here in Australia, and presumably an Australian citizen. 
Yes. Um, married with two children. Um, and then you got your MA in Art History at the University of Sydney in 2012. I don't know whether Professor John Clark was one of your teachers. Did you? John, <laughs> your, your book mentorship. Um, and also his um, encouragement. I know he's encouraged so many students uh, from China and from other parts of Asia. Um, and you had done pretty well uh, with your MA and ended up starting on a PhD for a couple of years. Uh, but usually it takes a few years to uh, get a PhD out. And you realised that you really wanted to paint. So in 2014, you decided to become, you know, to commit full time to painting. And that was when you painted Sally yeah. uh, from the Art Gallery of New South Wales. And she, that, that, that I was, portrait, yeah, I was highly. Hmm? I was the intern, that's how I got the moment. Oh, yeah. so that's, uh, that was highly commended for the yeah, yeah. So this confirmed that you've made the right decision, <laughs> so you kept at it. And I, I think your rigorous academic training uh, continues in all your new work, that you, you keep pushing boundaries keep challenging yourself. And the thing is, you take an academic approach to doing new things. I was really impressed when I saw that you you were experimenting and investigating the background of the paints and the colours, etc, etc. And um, this was really quite wonderful. Um, so, uh, I thought as a teenager you would have read a lot about art, and this would be right? Yes. Mm. And, and Western art? Um, Western art, yes, actually. Because you already knew a lot about Chinese art. No, no, no. no? Western art uh, was more appealing to like, young people's eyes. That's what I think. I, I never really liked Chinese art. Oh, but you were good at it. <laughs> no, I, 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 no, no, I did calligraphy and like, brush mm. painting father, but, but I always think Chinese art looks boring. Yeah. Yeah. And he probably said, you, you young children. Yeah. And that, that would represent the sort of notion to apply to my generation. Because, mm. because, and there's usually no visual experience. Yeah. You, you go to the Palace Museum, they usually, the exhibition space in the 80s and 90s, they, they're not so wisely designed and dark. And you can't see, you can't see those works. You can't appreciate them. <laughs> oh, <okay. Well. laughs> but I became but interested in Chinese art after I came overseas. Really? Yeah. After I, I'm able to closely examine those works in the museum. Here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks to yeah. Australia. Thanks. Yeah. You were able to examine Chinese yeah. ancient artworks. Yeah. Absolutely. This is the advantage of coming to Australia. Um, anyways, um, so since 2014, you've taken part in quite a few exhibitions. Quite a few exhibition um, at Western Sydney. That was at the Institute for Australian and Chinese Arts at a culture centre. And it was an exhibition called Void. Uh, yeah. in just to, uh, last, year. last year. And Joanna was there to launch it. Um, and here I am in Art Atrium launching your uh, newest work. Um, I actually looked at all these paintings and I wrote them down and grouped them. Uh, because he sent, I asked him questions, but I couldn't get his email response because it went into the chat. Um, so um, I had, I 
fellow to his artworks and the thought about them and uh, the ones, the other ones, which are social and political commentary. Um, but I didn't know that he had actually, for this exhibition, teamed up kinds of uh, works. But I'm going to let him talk about that. But I just want to say a couple of things. Um, these black and white down here, for me, well, it looks like traditional Chinese, but modified by this young man who's a modern thinker. Um, but he's drawn lines to probably encapsulate a small part to draw your attention to it. I could quite wrong. Anyway, um, now here you have all these uh, scenic uh, paintings. Um, you could say they're sort of Chinese but modernised. Uh, very modern and with unusual colours. Um, and I found this one extremely interesting. Um, you have these rocks that look Chinese, and then you have this guy in a boat, and the boat is huge. And, and in, in Chinese traditional works, the scenery is always huge, and human beings are tiny. So he, he has modernized it and brought human beings uh, into a shape that's really almost as big as the huge rocks. Um, his social commentary is interesting too, but I, I'll let him talk about that. Um, not being someone who goes on the internet, a lot of these things are quite unfamiliar to me. Um, although I did mm, what the message was, I couldn't always grasp um, the original meaning. For example, you have hurry ending soon. Um, I mean, you say it's from some pop movie or something, and I, I don't know these. Uh, and I, I imagine that maybe this is urban, urban scape and something horrible is going to happen. Anyway, I'm going to uh, uh, say I'd like to launch this exhibition. Congratulations to Simon for bringing your work uh, in here for us to appreciate. And I'll let you talk a bit more about your business. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and the opening speech that marks the opening of this show. And Mabel has been a long-term supporter of uh, Chinese-Australian artists that they began to arrive in Australia in the late 1980s. And uh, in comparison, I'm, I'm representing the younger Chinese-Australian generation of artists. And I just feel honored that I, I have this continuous support from Mabel. And also want to thank Simon. Simon is the only artist uh, gallery director I know that has exhibition himself. And uh, the point is, Simon is such a busy man with a full schedule uh, activities in the arts and culture, but he does he manages everything like a breeze. So that's something I don't have. <laughs> I just, by you know approaching the deadline of this exhibition, I got very frustrated, and so I worked up to midnight for a long time. And sometimes, after I cleaned up, for everybody who is uh, familiar with oil painting, they know it is quite messy, and it takes time to clean up. Otherwise, you can't start your day the next day. So it takes a long time to clean them up, 
and, and I turned my head around to have a last look of the world, and I found an error, and I'm, I'm not satisfied with it. But I'm, I was already exhausted, but I have to, I have to put the gloves on, and to start mixing the paint again, just to fix it. Yeah, but I guess that's the uh, process. That's the natural process of, you know, uh, artistic creation. And for uh, yeah, I recently received a lot of comments on how I make changes in my art. But there's one thing I want to say is uh, those changes uh, didn't happen randomly, and there is a unified. Um, belief or a unified theme in that I have been carried on from the beginning of my uh, art career, which is, so uh, the, the first inspiration of my art, of my earliest art, they all relating to uh, traditional Chinese landscape. And the spirit of uh, traditional Chinese landscape is the man and nature relationship. So to simplify, that, so that man and nature relationship is the continuous thing I've been working on. It doesn't matter how they change in the, in the concept, in the style, in the appearance. And so I used to combine Western and Eastern elements into more Chinese like uh, landscapes. That's my earlier work. And then around two or three years, Ago, I started to simplify my paintings, represented by the, the orange and the blue one over there. So I started to get more inspiration from color field paintings, abstract paintings, uh, hot edge geometric paintings. Um, so I started to, in, to remove all of my elements. Uh, but I introduced geometric shapes into my landscape, which represent the man-made world, uh, to put it in contrast with the natural world. And then it comes to this exhibition. I'm still working on that theme, the man and nature relationship, but I had the idea to separate them, so I, I won't present them in, the, in one image, so I'm gonna separate them. So that also is like my personal uh, struggle sometimes, because when, when you create as an artist, sometimes you feel like you are away from the reality because you are, you are you're creating your art, you're in the, in the world of art, but you can never be separated from the reality, so I still receive my information from the news, from the internet, and from things happening around the, around the world, so that all um, those information are all affecting um, my brain, and I feel like sometimes I'm stuck in between these two worlds. So the world of my art and the world of the reality of what's happening around the world. So I want to, um, uh, I want to display them in 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 this new format that I want to separate them. So I created uh, eight pairs of oil paintings, the main body of work for this exhibition. So 16 paintings in eight pairs, each pair containing two exactly the same dimension of work. And all the works on the left are landscape-related works. They are more surreal, they are more atmospheric, and they are more away from the reality and represent more of my imaginary world, of my an ideal realm. And in contrast, I'm I painted figurative works that I placed uh, on the right uh, of those, to the right of those landscape works. And all of those figurative works are based on a selection of images I found online. They're either from news articles, uh, Instagram posts, and movies, drama series, documentaries. So I collected all of those images and I recreated them, and I made my personal uh, commentary with uh, a word or a phrase that I painted on top of it that purely represent my personal um, idea that look into the problem, uh, or I shouldn't say problem, <laughs> look into the thing that happened. And, and then uh, I want to I put them together in contrast, hoping to 
uh, to generate this paradox feeling to the audience and, and hopefully can uh, make people think and can make people wonder what's the meaning behind it. So I also prepared the notes explaining the source of the images of all the figurative works and the text, the source of the text. And I, but one thing I didn't explain is the relationship between the image and the text. I want to leave that uh, to uh, leave that open to the, the audience's uh, own to their own interpretation, and and then there there is a com complex relationship between the more atmospheric landscape works and the figurative works, and I also want to leave that interpretation open to audiences. And finally, I want, I want to. Uh, thank my family who always support me in Australia, outside Australia, and some of them, my uncle, auntie, they're here today. And without their support, I just, uh, it's very difficult to keep working as, um, as an artist. So I hope you enjoy the show. Thanks. Thank you, Dafa. Um, I'd like to say that I really think that Dafa is going to be like one of the top artists, you know, he's, he's still relatively young for an artist, and he's definitely on the rise. And um, I mean, I look at an artist and think of usually two criteria. One is whether technically they are competent and in fact excel in it. And secondly, their ideas and concept behind the work. And uh, that one, that's both extremely well. And the fact that he moved so easily from one concept to another, and progress along the way, which shows that he's always thinking about what he does. So he doesn't just paint, he always think about what he paints. And um, um, I think that series of work with the geometrical, uh, geometrical shapes and landscape, I really like those as well because they, I mean, as an architect, I always think of like looking from the inside, looking out, and vice versa, the inside and outside relationship. So to me, it's like you're standing inside a room with transparent sort of walls and, and floor and just looking up into the landscape. It, it is quite surreal, but he, he basically, technically, does so well. And I also really like the text work which, which he's developing because a lot of artists do like to make social comments um, about the, what's happening to our world, um, about the environment and what human beings are doing to the environment and to the world. So I think a lot of these work do make people who look at them think about what the work is about. And again, he shows that he's equally adept in doing figurative work, as he does with abstract work. So, you know, like, um, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, Darwin in the years to come over the next 10 years, where he will be 10 years from now. I think it will be a very exciting journey. So, um, do enjoy the exhibition. And um, if you have any further questions, you can talk to both Mabel and, and Dava. Thank you. Thank you.